What is going on, everyone? I hope that if you're watching this, you had a great Thanksgiving and a great fantasy week. But let's get down to business. It's week 13 now, and we officially are prepping for the fantasy playoffs. Your trade deadline is probably going to expire on the 29th, assuming you play an ESPN. And you need to be making these waiver wire pickups to take your team to the next level and make sure you have no more holes in your roster and you are ready to compete and win a fantasy football championship. So let's get started and start with the wide receivers that you need to add. This week, our number one priority is Jaden Reed, the wide receiver from the Packers. And I was surprised in doing some research for the video that Jaden Reed had 19 points, 19 points, and 15 points in the last three games. Now, the Packers offense looked very bad at the beginning of the year. Jordan Love flashed, then he sucked. Now he's good again. I don't really know what to do. I'm a Bears fan, but of course, that doesn't matter to me. And I really like Jaden Reed. He actually went to a high school nearby, so I guess maybe I'm a little biased there. I really like Jaden Reed, but I also love Christian Watson, so I guess that kind of all cancels out. But let's talk the numbers here. Played 73% of the snaps, drew eight targets, four receptions, 34 yards, one touchdown, 15 fantasy points. It is a little concerning to see how he only had 34 yards and that one touchdown kind of bumped him up. That said, he is getting a lot more volume with eight targets. You see that Christian Watson, I think, is going to be the alpha going forward. I think he's finally on that right track. But still, Jaden Reed should be viable, assuming this Packers offense continues to get even better. Now, the next guy I'm rostering is another wide receiver, and he actually didn't have a great week in week 12. Only 9.3 fantasy points, but the most important number to me is that 13 targets. It doesn't matter if he only caught five passes for 43 yards. He is being targeted. We saw what Downs has done during the stretch of the year. I really like Downs as a prospect coming out of UNC. I think he is a great player, great playmaker in the slot. And this coach offense doesn't look too bad. Jonathan Taylor is definitely elevating it. Gardner Minshew is, you know, eh. 68% of the snaps could go up. But I think in good game scripts, Downs should definitely be startable. And again, that 13 targets is something that is very, very elite. And that's something I want to put on my bench in case, you know, he continues to break out. Then I have that flex spot open for Josh Downs in my fantasy football playoffs, assuming he's going up against a very good matchup. But I really like Downs here. 47.2% rostered. If you can, he's on that 50% threshold. But again, if you can, go out and get him. Then we'll go over to Chubba Hubbard, who is rostered in 48.6% of leagues, but just dropped 20 points this week. Now, I don't love Chubba Hubbard. You can see 14 carries, 47 yards. Not very efficient, but he did play 64% of the snaps. Miles Sanders is clearly not that guy. And something that makes me actually want to start him is the fact that he had five targets. Now, that's not bad at all. Bryce Young has just looked terrible. The Panthers look terrible, but they just fired their head coach. So hopefully they can get a little, you know, regime change and motivate these guys to play better. It just is the thing that I don't think it can get worse for Chubba Hubbard and the Panthers. And right now, I'm really only looking for Bryce Young and the Panthers to improve, which should inherently help out Chubba Hubbard again. I think I would roster him, you know, maybe I need a running back in one of these next bye weeks getting into the playoffs or in the right situation, the Panthers get a lot better. They play a, have a very good matchup. I have Chubba Hubbard on my bench to start over, you know, whatever running back isn't performing up to standards. But then let's go to our running back too. We have Keaton Mitchell, who I was on early in the season. I actually didn't want to go crazy over him once he became very popular. I was saying he's a nice stash. If Gus Edwards went down, and Gus Edwards did, Justice Hill is still seeing a lot of work in the offense. But Mitchell had nine carries, 46% of the snaps. I think if he increases the sword even more and gets over that 50% hump, he can be fancy relevant. I'm not sure he's there yet. Again, situational football with Keaton Mitchell. I think a lot of things have to go right with him. But again, you see nine carries, 64 yards. The efficiency is there. Had two targets, 10.9 fantasy points. I don't mind having Keaton Mitchell as a dart throw. If you have space, I think it definitely makes sense because he's a talented player. It's a good Ravens offense. If something breaks his way, he could honestly be a league winner. That said, with the committee they run, I think it would be a very long shot for him to be that, you know, lead running back getting 60, 70% of the snaps. But of course, this is a shot that I'm willing to take if I have nothing else on my bench. 
Now we'll go over to our quarterback, Jordan Love, correlating with Jaden Reed. And let me warn you beforehand. I had Jordan Love here. I wasn't buying any Jordan Love. I didn't really think he was a great quarterback. And I put him on my waiver wire watch list. And as soon as I said to go pick up Jordan Love, I picked him up myself. Needed, I don't remember. I think it was like around 10 points from him on a Monday night football game. And he did nothing and lost me a week. And now I kind of have a forever grudge against Jordan Love. So I'm a little bit biased, but again, you know, we're keeping professional here. I'll put my bias aside, and we're still having Jordan Love on this list. It's just a thing that I don't think anyone knows if we're going to get this Jordan Love that's throwing for 268 yards, three touchdowns, completing 70% of his passes, and going for 26.62 fantasy points, or if we're getting the Jordan Love that can't get 10 points on a Monday Night Football game. What also is very interesting to me is he had 40 rushing yards, and while that doesn't seem like a lot, that will add up. So that's very intriguing as well. I think Christian Watson, if he continues to play like this, Jordan Love should improve as well. He really doesn't have a great supporting cast around him. Let's not act like the Packers are, are amazing. Aaron Jones has been injured for most of the year. He's out right now. A.J. Dillon has just not been very good. Love A.J. Dillon as a person. I think he's a very cool guy, you know, on all the social media stuff. But he's not a great running back, unfortunately. Jaden Reed is great, but again, still a rookie. Christian Watson need to be that guy. And he's just been injured, and then when he has been healthy, Jordan Love has just played absolutely terrible, kind of screwing him over. But let's round out this list with a tight end that I love. I actually really like Pat Frymuth coming into the year, but this Steelers offense has been worse than I could imagine. Now, the reason I like him is because of that target volume. He is alongside Deontay Johnson, but I like him more because he's getting that high target share as a tight end. Deontay Johnson just hasn't been able to punch in for touchdowns, Finally did this year. Good for him. But Frymuth, he's only varsity in 41.9% leagues. If you need a stream of tight end, if you are looking for a low-end tight end one option, Frymuth is, is your guy. Just dropped 21 points, 120 yards, nine receptions. Played 60% of snaps. Not bad, though it is noted that he's coming off an injury. But again, yeah, I really like Frymuth. He was actually amazing as a rookie and as a second-year player, getting around 90 targets each year. But with Matt Cannon gone, this offense actually looked watchable. Now, I never thought Kenny Pickett was great, but Matt Canada, obviously, everyone knew it. He was just god-awful. No one liked Matt Canada. So I wasn't really blaming all the struggles on Canada, but it kind of seemed like there was even more. Like, Steelers fans were right. A lot of their struggles were on Canada. As You know, Pickett was able to take some shots on the field. They were actually to make a good offense last week. So... We'll stash Fryermuth again. Tight end is so hard, so it really doesn't even make a difference once you get down to that low-end options. But Fryermuth is a guy that could definitely creep up there. Pretty consistent. Great target share. That's what I'm looking for in a tight end. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you also like these new graphics, please let me know by dropping a like or saying something in the comments. They really, honestly, um, took a longer time than normal to make. I want to make this switch. We are kind of Working on this brand redesign and having this, you know, theme should be one more enjoyable for for you guys and one to kind of help separate face off. You know, it's it, it is similar to many creators, but I kind of want to put my own twist, put my own stats, type of picture and logo on it as well. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know if you have any questions down below. Again, I will be answering all questions about waiver wires down in the comments or anything else. But again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.